Welcome to another installment of Badass Film History. Today we're going to talk about Pulp Fiction, the best film from an all-time great director. Before we get started, why not smash that like button? Also, hit subscribe and support the channel. Done with that? Cool, let's get into it. Quentin Tarantino worked at a video store in the 80s and was a huge movie buff. He met producer Lawrence Bender at a party, and seeing the passion that Tarantino had for film, Bender encouraged him to write a screenplay. That screenplay was never produced because, hey, everybody's first attempt at something is probably going to suck. But Tarantino kept at it, writing, directing, and starring in his first film, My Best Friend's Birthday, which was never finished but eventually evolved into the screenplay for True Romance, which was directed by Tony Scott. He also auditioned a lot as an actor, booking small roles from time to time. One of those roles was the part of an Elvis impersonator on The Golden Girls, which financed Tarantino's breakthrough film, Reservoir Dogs. Before Reservoir Dogs, however, Tarantino met Roger Avery. They were both working as production assistants on a Dolph Lundgren workout video called Maximum Potential. That's right, there would be no Pulp Fiction without Ivan Drago. In 1990, Tarantino and Avery decided to reach their maximum potential, see what they did there, and write a short film, thinking that it would be easier to get made than a full length. They changed their minds pretty quickly and pivoted to make the film a trilogy of shorts, each of which would be written by different people. Avery's section was titled Pandemonium Reigns and was eventually reworked into The Gold Watch. The script would have to wait, however, as Tarantino became a hot commodity as a scriptwriter, writing screenplays for From Dust Till Dawn, Natural Born Killers, and True Romance. After the success of the Tarantino-directed Reservoir Dogs in 1992, he was offered several films as a director, including Speed and Men in Black. Which you gotta admit would have been great to see Will Smith calling aliens motherfuckers. Welcome to Earth. Instead, Tarantino decided to work on his own stuff, and that stuff was revisiting the trilogy film he and Avery started. He said, I got the idea of doing something that novelists get a chance to do, but filmmakers don't. Telling three separate stories, having characters float in and out with different weights depending on the story. I'm using old forms of storytelling and then purposely having them run awry. Part of the trick is to take these movie characters, these genre characters, and these genre situations and actually apply them to some of real life's rules and see how they unravel. The film was originally to be financed by Columbia TriStar, but according to a studio executive, then TriStar chief Mike Matavoy found it to be too demented. Avery has said that TriStar's issues with the script were significant. He said the studio basically told them, this is the worst thing ever written. It makes no sense. Someone's dead and then they're alive. It's too wrong, violent, and unfilmable. So I thought, that's that. So Lawrence Bender brought the script to Miramax, which was recently acquired by Disney. And the film got the green light. That's right, you heard me. Pulp Fiction is technically a Disney film, meaning Bruce Willis is a Disney princess. And the casting was simply perfect. Hollywood megastar and Disney princess Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson in the role that made him an icon, John Travolta in a role that launched a career resurgence, Uma Thurman in a breakout performance and an assortment of legends, up-and-comers, and character actors that may go down as the best ensemble ever assembled. One of the greatest stories is the casting of Jackson, who Tarantino wrote the part for after Lawrence Fishburne, and whose audition was a mere formality, or so he thought. Jackson thought it would be just a reading, but actor Paul Calderon blew the doors off when he read for the part. In danger of losing the part, Jackson auditioned a second time. When he arrived at the audition, someone in the office greeted him as Mr. Fishburne, as in actor Lawrence Fishburne. Jackson was mad and channeled his great vengeance and furious anger into the audition, obviously nailing the part. Calderon wasn't left out in the cold, though. He was cast as the bartender for Marcellus Wallace. Another great story is about Jules' awesome hair. As Jackson puts it, Jules was supposed to have an afro, said Jackson. Well, Quentin's a huge fan of black exploitation films, so in his mind, Jules had this big afro. And unfortunately for him, he sent this young white PA over to South Central to buy an afro wig. And she bought a jerry curl wig thinking it's an afro wig. Tarantino initially didn't like it, but Jackson did, and the look stuck. It's strange how these things work out. Speaking of strange, one of the strangest things about the film was that it lacked a score. Instead of hiring someone to score the film, Tarantino instead used a mix of surf music, rock and roll, soul, and pop songs. The results were brilliant, giving the film a timelessly cool vibe that penetrated pop culture. 
Pulp Fiction premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in May of 1994, winning the Palme d'Or and generating huge buzz. It went into wide U.S. release in October of 1994 and hit like a culture bomb going off. The impact it had cannot be understated. What Smells Like Teen Spirit did to music, Pulp Fiction did to film. It ended up becoming the first indie film to gross more than $100 million at the U.S. box office, being described by Variety magazine as becoming the Star Wars of independence, exploding expectations for what an indie film could do at the box office. Bruce Willis's participation sparked a flurry of A-list actors taking roles in independent films, and Tarantino's style was mimicked by everyone from star directors to every waiter with a dream. And that's okay because Tarantino himself was a film buff who borrowed heavily from Martin Scorsese, Akira Kurosawa, Sergio Leone, and other filmmakers that made really cool sh**. In the end, while Reservoir Dogs had announced the arrival of a new directing talent, it was Pulp Fiction that launched Tarantino into the stratosphere of all-time greats. Working with the behind-the-scenes talents he did on this film, like Roger Avery and editor Sally Menke, combined with the exceptional cast and trend-setting soundtrack, made Pulp Fiction what it is, one of the most truly badass films ever. Want to see something covered? Leave suggestions in the comments on what movies, directors, actors, franchises, or whatever you think is badass for us to cover. And again, be sure to subscribe for more content.